I was born down here in the valley below us, um, right in the center of the Ute homeland, and in many ways Hill People Gear was too. Uh, the Ute people basically used to, their home territory was from the Continental Divide, all of western Colorado, and out into eastern Utah. And in fact, one of the earlier treaties, all of western Colorado was Ute land. Uh, the Ute people basically, on a seasonal basis, could be found anywhere from the desert floor all the way up to here as a place where they would have summered. You know, there's old, old ancient trails way back in the middle of these woods where none of the current trails are. Uh, and I found a couple of shelters as well back in there. Um, and then, you know, they would have been even higher all the way up to Timberline and some of the more rugged mountains uh, in Colorado down in the San Juans. Uh, so this, uh, this backpack, the Ute backpack, is named after them. Uh, because, you know, like them, it's, it's a generalist. This backpack is, is good in a variety of conditions, a variety of terrain, um, a variety of uses. Um, the, I could have any Hill People Gear backpack, and of course I have several. And so I typically, for hiking, use the Umlindi for day hiking and step right up to the Quia, which is the Ute's bigger brother for backpacking. But if I could only have one Hill People Gear backpack, this is the one that gets, gets it all done. It's built on the very heaviest chassis system we have, which is capable of 300 pounds. Uh, probably more, but 300 pounds is all that I've tested it for. This is exactly the same chassis as is found on the Decker frame. And then the Quia frame, the only difference is that the Quia has a taller frame. Uh, so this, you can carry any weight of load with this thing. Um, it has uh, our yoke style uh, harness, which we use on everything, extremely comfortable. Uh, it's, it's not sold with the Prairie Belt, but we're expecting you to buy a Prairie Belt with it. And the reason we don't sell it with the Prairie Belt is many of our customers already have a Prairie Belt and they don't want to buy a second one for their pack. So add a belt if you don't already have one. And the Prairie Belt is removable, it can go on different packs, it can be used by itself just simply as belt order kit. Um, you know, like you get into a camp, you pull it off your pack and you can use it for, you know, smaller hikes, uh, lighter hikes just cruising around. Uh, so that's, that's what the, the chassis, the suspension side of the Ute backpack looks like. Uh, on the back you can see a whole lot of compression. Why? Because compression controls the load. And I've got this thing sucked down uh, all the way into like just kind of a heavy day pack load. Uh, this is our pulley style compression. It accepts a variety of back pockets and all of that is detailed in another video. Um, but it's a, it's a very useful compression system that does a great job. Uh, so uh, part of why this is so versatile, you can suck it down like this and even smaller uh, to be a nice day pack. At the same time, I've gone on midwinter overnight backpacking trips. So, you know, where I'm carrying enough stuff, including a mini wood stove to keep me warm, you know, down to zero pretty easily. Uh, and then I've done multi-day summer backpacking trips and even fall backpacking trips out of this thing. So it's very versatile in terms of what you can do with it. Uh, we're actually into version two with this of this pack after eight years. And the changes that we've made, uh, first of all, we've added a zippered top lid. So there's a zipper on this side and you've got a dimensional pocket on top. Now, you know, I had mixed feelings about that. The reason there wasn't originally one is as soon as you have this big floppy top lid, you got to do something with it. Now, if you're running a back pocket, you can just kind of, where these, these takeoffs are from the back pocket, you can just suck this in behind the back pocket. But as you can see, if I had these vertical straps tied in here, which is where they tie in, there'd really be no way to control this. So all I've done is unhooked them and moved them to these tabs, and that allows me to really control this heavy top pocket that I have some things in. Uh, underneath the top pocket, we have a Velcro field. So any Velcro back pouches you can put there. I'm using one of our tool rolls, just simply removable. And that's my first aid kit, and that's what lives under, underneath my top lid. 
And then it's just one continuous compartment because that allows you to compress the thing very easily. If you had a separate sleeping bag compartment, that adds weight, complexity, another zipper, which is a failure point, and then it becomes harder to compress. So that's just one big sack. Uh, the other thing we've done for version two is we've um, made the the wand pockets, which in version one were definitely oversized. This is a much bigger bellows wand pocket. You could put dual Nalgene's on each side if you wanted to, uh, but there's a draw cord system on the wand pocket itself that'll allow you to to lay the wand pocket completely flat if you don't want to have have much in it. Um, and then the uh, the bottom. This is something we added along the way, but the bottom is 1000D. The very first versions didn't, but that's been 1000 denier Cordura just for abrasion on granite up in the high country uh, for quite some time. So that is the uh, Hill People Gear Ute Backpack, very versatile pack, uh, named in honor of, of the people whose homelands we now inhabit, uh, who in fact themselves were great and very flexible exploiters of a variety of different uh, environmental areas and uh, you can purchase this online or in our uh, shop in downtown Grand Junction, Colorado, right smack dab there in the center of the uh, traditional Ute homelands.